Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Zhong. Today I'm going to share with you how to create a hologram graph animation in Blender 3D 3.0 beta version using geometry nodes field workflow. So before we dive into Blender, let me go through what we are going to do in this tutorial. First, we are going to create a map the numbers and the graph using geometry nodes and then we are going to animate the graph using an empty sphere then next we are going to add the grid lighting and the material to finish the scene okay so without further ado let's get started okay first we are going to start with the map so select all and delete everything add a plane press n to toggle the transform panel Change the dimension of X and Y to 13. Then press Ctrl A and apply the scale. So make sure the scale of your X, Y, Z axis is 1. Then go to the Geometry Nodes tab. Right click and Join Areas. Click New to add a new Geometry Nodes. Then I want to subdivide the plane. So press Shift A, go to Mesh and add a subdivide mesh. Let's turn on the wireframe so that we can see what we are doing then increase the level to 7 okay then i want to clone instant object on the vertices here so let's add an instant on point node then add a cube and connect it to instance make the cube smaller and then next i want to mask the instant object using an image texture so press shift a Go to texture and add an image texture. Then connect the color to scale. Then click open and choose the map texture. I have already put this texture in the description below. So please download it and follow along the tutorial. Then currently the texture looks very weird. This is not our map shape. And the reason is because we haven't connect our UV map data to the image texture node. So to connect it, grab the vector here and connect it to the group input press n and then go to the group tab select the vector in the name column rename it uv map then go to the modifier properties under uv map here click this button and select uv map okay then we can see our map now but the map is distorted this is because currently our plane is actually a rectangle shape and the texture size have a longer shape so to quickly fix this issue, let's add a transform node. Put it before the subdivide mesh. Let's change the scale of the X axis to 1.6 maybe. It don't have to be very precise in this case. Okay then, let's go to the rotation X and rotate it 90 degree. Okay now we have done the map. Let's select all this node. Press Ctrl J to frame it. Then press F2 and name it map. Okay next. We can start to create the random numbers. So let's add a join geometry. Add it before the group output. Then add a grid. And connect it to the join geometry. Then add a transform node again. Rotate the grid 90 degree. Then I want to make it bigger. And then let's increase the vertices of X axis to 14 maybe and the vertices for Y put 8. And now I want to clone our random numbers on these vertices. So let's add an instant on point node. Put it before the join geometry. And then press shift A, go to text and add a string to curve node. Connect the curve to the instant. In the string column, Let's simply put a random numbers first. We will come back to animate it later. Then go to the instant on point node. Rotate the text 90 degree. Then press shift A again. Go to curve and add a few curve node. Put after the string to curve node to make the text visible. And currently the position of our text is all located at the same Y axis position. It is all flat because the grid we added here is flat. But if we refer to the sample, all the text should be located at a different position. Some of the text need to be in front and some of it behind. So to do it, we need to manipulate the vertices point of our grid. So let's select three of this node. 
and press M to mute it for temporary and then to manipulate the point we need to add a set position node put it after the transform node then add a position node and connect it to the set position then add a mix RGB node put it after the position then add a noise texture I want to use noise texture to randomize the position of the points connect it to color too then I want the noise texture to affect the position of Y axis only so add a combine XYZ and connect the noise texture to Y axis and now the effect is not obvious enough so let's add a map range to adjust it so let's adjust the to minimum to minus 40 then go to the transform node I want to move the grid backward a little bit let's put 11 for y axis then in the 3d viewport press numpad 1 to see the front view then let's adjust the z axis as well I want the grid to cover the map so put 2 maybe and now we can unmute all these nodes to show the text let's turn off the wireframe for temporary so we are easy to see the text then press this button to change the font so select any font you like I'm going to use this open font then we can make the text smaller at the 3D viewport press numpad 1 to see the front view turn on the wireframe again and now we can see the text is grown on every vertices of the grid but this is not what we want we want the text to appear on some of the vertices only and we want to hide some of the text so to do it let's add a random value connect it to the selection for instant on point then decrease the minimum value to hide some of the text let's put minus 8 maybe then we can play with the seed 7 is good for me you can play around with this value don't have to follow me then next I want to animate the numbers so let's add a value to string node then connect it to the string change the decimal to 2 I want to have 2 decimal then in the value column let's start hashtag frame and press enter and now if we go back to the layout tab if we play the animation we can see the numbers is animate follow the frame numbers let's go back to the frame one and go back to the geometry nodes tab and okay now we have done the numbers so select all of this press ctrl j to frame it then press f2 and name it numbers press enter and then next we need to clone the map and the numbers so to do it go to the group output duplicate the joint geometry node press n to hide this panel and then press shift a go to mesh primitive and add a mesh line connect it to the joint geometry okay then I want to add an instant on point node after the mesh line and then take this joint geometry and connect it to the instant so by doing this we are actually taking the map and the numbers we created just now as the instant object so this joint geometry is actually joining the map and the numbers together then we take this joint geometry and connect it to the instant as our instant object okay now there are 10 instant objects grown on the mesh line and we only need 3 so let's reduce the count to 3 then change the offset G to 0 then adjust the offset X put 22 maybe okay then select both of these nodes press ctrl J to frame it then press F2 and name it cloning press enter okay next we can start to create the graph line okay so to do it let's duplicate the joint geometry node again then we need to add a curve line connect it to the joint geometry this is our curve line I think we need to move the map backward a little bit so that it won't overlap together let's go to the map section under the transform node adjust the y axis to 2 maybe and then now 
Let's select the node for map numbers and cloning and press M to hide it for now so that we are easy to see the curve line. Okay, then we need to add more points onto the curve line. Currently, the curve line only have a start point and end point. We need to add more points in between and manipulate the position of the points later. So let's add a resample curve node. Put it after the curve line. And then now we can start manipulate the point. So first, I want the curve line to lie on the X axis. So to do it, we need to add a set position node. Then we need to add an index node and connect it to the position and then add a combine XYZ and put it after the index. And now the index is connect to X axis. And if we turn off the X axis guide, we can see the line is now lie on the X axis already. And then now under the resample curve, let's increase the count to make the line longer. Let's put 50 maybe. Okay, now I want to make the line go up and down so that it will look like a graph. So to do it, let's add a noise texture node. Connect the color to G axis. We only want the noise texture to affect the position of G axis. We want to make the line go up and down. Then connect this index to vector. Let's move this beside so we have more space. And now it is not obvious enough. So let's try to add a math node and we are going to multiply it. Change the function to multiply. Let's try to multiply 10 maybe. And if you want to change the pattern of the line, you can try to adjust the scale to have different style. But I think this is already good for me. Then now select all this node again. Press M again to unhide it. Then in the 3D viewport, press numpad 1 to see the front view. And we can start to move the graph line to the position we want. So let's go back to our graph section. Duplicate this math node. Change the function to subtract. Then adjust this value to move up and down. Let's put 3.6 maybe. Then duplicate this math node again. Put it at the x axis here. Then adjust this value to move left or right. Let's put 10 for this. Okay, now we can start to turn the curve line to mesh. So let's add a curve to mesh node. Put it after the set position. Then add a rectangle. Connect it to the profile curve. Make the rectangle smaller. 0 0.02 maybe. Okay, now we have done the graph line. And we will come back to animate it later. So let's select all these nodes. Press Ctrl J to frame it. Then select the frame. Press F2 and name it Graph Line. Okay, next we can start to create the candlestick chart. So let's move this beside and duplicate the joint geometry node again. So now I want to take the vertices point of this curve line and clone the candlestick onto it. So to do it, let's add an instant on point node, connect it to the joint geometry. And then I want to take the points from this curve line. So let's take it from the set position here. Take it before the curve to mesh node because we don't want the point of the mesh. We only want the point of the curve. So connect the set position to the point. Okay, then add a cube. And connect it to the instant. Let's make the cube smaller. And then let's duplicate this cube. Add a joint geometry. Join the cube to the joint geometry, then make the second cube even smaller. Make the G axis longer. Okay, then I think I want to offset the position a little bit. So let's add a transform node. Put it before the instant on point node. Then change the X axis translation to 1. And the Y to minus 2 maybe. So they won't stick together. And now I want to add more candlestick on the curve line. So to do it, let's add a resample curve. Put it after the transform node. Increase the count to 100. Okay, then I want to randomize the scale of the candlestick. So to do it, let's add a combine XYZ. Connect it to the scale in instant on point node. Then move this beside so we have more space. Then change the XYZ axis to 1. 
then add a random value and connect it to the Z axis. Okay, next we can start to animate the candlestick using a controller. So in the 3D viewport, press Shift A and add an empty sphere, then rename it controller. So I want to make it when I move the controller along the X axis, the candlestick will scale one by one from zero to their original size. Let's drag the controller into the geometry node editor. And then let's add a scale instant. Put it after the instant on point node. Then add a position node because we need to let Blender know the position of this controller. Then let's add a vector math node. Connect both of them together. Then we only want to take the location of X axis. So let's add a separate X, Y, Z node. Connect it and connect this X axis to the scale. And now if we try to move the controller, we will notice the controller is working, but the scale is crazy big. So let's try to add a map range. And now, if we move the controller, we can see the effects is working in the opposite direction. When we move the controller to the right, the effect is go to the left. So to fix this issue, go back to the vector math node and change the operation to subtract. So now we fix it. But this is not what we want yet. What we want is we want the controller to mask the candlestick from left to right. But currently, the direction is from right to left. So to fix this issue, go to the map range, change the from minimum to 1 and the from maximum to 0. Then try to drag the controller again. And yeah, we fix it. Now let's select all these nodes. Press Ctrl J to frame it. Press F2 and name it candlestick chart. Okay, now I want to animate the graph line we created just now by using this same controller as well. I want the graph line to move together with the candlestick chart. So let's drag all this node beside so we have more space. Go to the graph line section. Move this higher. Then I want to add a trim curve node. Put it before the curve to mesh node. And then I want to use the controller here to control the end value of the trim curve node. So to do it, change this to length, then adjust the end value until it reaches the end of the curve. So it's around 70. Then go back to the candlestick section, duplicate this controller, press alternate P to unframe it, drag it into the graph line section, And then now, we only want to take the X axis location of the controller and slot it into the trim curve node end value. So again, let's add a separate XYZ, connect the location of the controller to the separate XYZ, then connect the X axis to the end value. If you wonder what is the value that actually slot to the end value here, to check it, you can hover your mouse on this dot and the numbers will appear. So this is the numbers we slot to the end value, 10.2. So let's say if we try to hover our mouse on the controller location here, we can also see the XYZ location of the controller. So let's try to check it in the 3D viewport too. Pin the geo node editor in the 3D viewport, press N, select the controller. And now we can see the numbers in transform panel is exactly same like the node here. Okay, now if we try to move the controller, we will notice the trim curve is not moving at the same position with the controller. The controller is here and the trim curve is still here. So let's drag the controller to the starting point. The controller are start masking the candlestick from minus 10 as we can see here on X axis minus 10. And if we check the end value of the trim curve node, the minimum value we can go is 0. So that means the trim curve node will start working after we move our controller to positive X axis. And that means we need to take the X axis location of the controller here and add 10. So let's add a math node. Change this to 10. Then now let's try to move the controller again. 
and we can see the trim curve still not follow the controller at some point. So let's try to drag the controller to the last candlestick. So the controller location at the last candlestick is around 40. And if we check the trim curve node, we need to have 70 meter in order to finish the line. And currently, the controller is located at 40. Then just now, we add 10. And now, we have 50. So to get to 70 in order to finish the line, let's try to take 70, divide 50. Then we get 1.4. So let's duplicate the math node. Change the function to multiply. Then multiply 1.4. Then let's try to move the controller again. Okay, now we fix it. Then we can start animate the controller. So let's go to the timeline. Drag the controller to the starting point. Drag your thumb indicator to the zero as well. In the location X axis here, right click and add a single keyframe. Then let's change the end frame to 600. Press this button to jump to the end frame. Drag the controller to the end as well. 40. Right click and add a single keyframe. Let's try to drag the thumb indicator and check everything. Okay, everything looks good. And then next, we can start to add camera to the scene. So let's drag the thumb indicator back to the first frame. Then in the 3D viewport, press Shift A and add a camera. Press numpad 0 to switch to camera view. Press Shift Tilt and start to adjust the angle you want. Then go to the camera property step, change the focal length to 45 maybe. The lower you put, the wider angle you will get. So for the first frame, I think I want to move the controller to the center of the scene. Right click and replace single keyframe. So we are starting from the center of the scene. Then hold shift and select the camera. Then in the 3D viewport, press Ctrl P and parent the camera to the controller. Try to drag the thumb indicator and now we can see the camera is moving together with the controller. Okay, then we can start to add material and lighting to the scene. So, drag the thumb indicator back to zero, turn on render preview, press shift A and add an area light. Move the light higher. Go to the light property step, increase the power to 4000. Make the size bigger. Go to the verb property step and change the background color to a dark blue color. Okay, then we can start to add material to the scene. So press Shift A and add a cube. Then name it Material Cube. Then hide it. Go to the Material tab, add 4 new material. So let's name this map for this one Candlestick. Graph line and this one numbers. Then go back to the geometry node editor. Go back to the map section. Press Shift A, go to material and add a set material node in the material column. Select map. Then duplicate the set material node. Go to the numbers section. Put it here, then select numbers, duplicate again, go to the graph line section, then put it here after the curve to mesh node, then select graph line, duplicate it again, go to the candlestick chart, put it here after the scale instant, select candlestick, then we can start working on the material, go to the shader editor, unpin it. Select the material cube, select the map material, press view and select frame all, delete the principal node, then add an emission shader, add a color ramp, then add an object info, connect them together, 
in the color ramp, change this color to blue color and change this one to a light blue color change this from linear to constant and then move the light blue color to around 0.9 change the emission to 2 then copy the map material and paste it to the candlestick drag the light blue color to around center change the light blue color to another blue color and then change this to a red color then change the emission strength to 8 this red is better and then copy the candlestick material paste it to the graph line delete the object info and the color ramp change the color to a blue color then copy the material and paste it to the numbers then change the emission color to white color okay then i want to add some fog to the scene go to world add the principal volume connect it to the volume then decrease the density to 0 0.006 maybe then change the color to a blue color okay then i want to add some depth of field to the scene so to do it let's add an empty cube move the empty cube higher then rename it focus point and then select the camera go to the depth of field activate it in the focus on object select focus point press numpad 0 to go back to camera view then under the aperture section change the f-stop to 0.2 okay then i want to add a grid behind the map so to do it add a plane press r followed by x and tap 90 to rotate it 90 degree then change the dimension to 24 then move it behind the map then go to the modifier properties add a subdivision change the level to 4 and choose simple then add a wireframe and change the thickness to 0 0.001 then add an array modifier and increase the count to 7 then go to the material properties tab add a new material change the surface to emission then change the color to blue color press numpad 0 to switch back to camera view okay then select the focus point hold control and select the area light and then select the controller then in the 3d viewport press ctrl p and parent them together then go to the thumb line again drag the thumb indicator to check everything not sure if you notice our grid here is almost disappear so to fix it let's drag back to zero again go to the render properties under the depth of field section activate the digital camera okay then finally we done it so if you like my video please subscribe and see you in the next video bye